Hey my loves, welcome back to Ravina at Home. It's been another busy week at the Singh household. I hope you've all had a fabulous Mother's Day. I know I had lots of fun. Let me share. On Thursday, I took a few of my mom's friends to lunch. That was really nice because I saw them after almost a year. On Friday, I arranged for my mom's sisters to receive flowers in Singapore and Bangkok. And on Saturday, my mini adults treated me to a brunch at Antipodia. It was really good. And on Sunday, we had my aunts over for tea. Their children are all away, so we took it upon ourselves to pamper them a little. It's now 2 p.m. and they'll be here by 4.30 p.m. So let's get started. The first thing on my menu is loaded baked nachos. I'm omitting the bacon. You can, of course, use it and keeping it vegetarian. I'm starting with sauteing onions and green chilies for the Mexican beans. Now you're going to cook this until the spices kind of stick to the beans. Now it's better to chop these and mix them in, but I'm going to make it easier for my guests to pick it out if they prefer. So I'm just going to use slices. Top this with Tex-Mex cheese and then put it in the oven for 4 to 5 minutes. Next are the flip overs. As you can see, I'm slicing some tomatoes. Not to waste the good bits, I shall chop and save these for later. I know my knife says cheese, but it is the best knife I have found to slice through the tomato skins and you know how hard that can be. I'm also slicing these Spanish onions so we can have two varieties of flip overs. Line your tray with parchment paper of some sort and add tiny puddles of olive oil. You can brush these if you like. Then add maple syrup, the tomatoes and the onions. A tiny bit of red wine vinegar and then salt and pepper. Thank you. 
Top this with puff pastry. Then brush some egg wash and pop it into the oven. The flip overs are done and they are perfect. I'm adding some shredded honey glazed ham on top of some of the flip overs, keeping the others vegetarian. Next is the cream cheese topping for the sandwiches. Heating up some oil and sauteing more onions. Don't overcook the carrots, but just soften them slightly. Switch off the flame before adding your cream cheese because you don't want it to melt. Set this aside to cool once mixed. You do not want to assemble this too early either because you don't want the bread to get soggy. Another type of sandwiches on the board today are cranberry chicken salad semis. Wow, that's a mouthful. I've gotten my chicken out of the oven. I've used a rotisserie chicken marinade and roasted it. Let it rest for 10 minutes before dicing the chicken. My son is going to help me with the rest of the chicken and the cucumber while I get dressed. Alright, so my son is done and I'm back. On to the chicken salad. Two cups diced chicken, one cup of cranberry sauce, any sort of sauce or compote will work. Add half a cup of Greek yogurt, though I'm using regular, and then two tablespoons of mayo, salt and cracked pepper, and mix. Store this in the refrigerator until you're ready to assemble. I have pre-toasted this multigrain bread and I'm adding dollops of cream cheese. You can use pickled dill to garnish the cream cheese sandwiches and garnish the chicken cranberry with chopped coriander for more flavor. While the oven and fridge do their job, I'll set the table. You have seen me use this runner before. To ensure that the runner is secure, I'm placing a big heavy board in the center. I'm going to work on the rest of the dishes around this. Now take your time, visualize while you arrange the plates. I'm adding a trivet because the loaded nachos will be straight from the oven. My theme is white, rose, pink, dark rose and wood. Since we will be seated during dinner, I'm using a double plate setting. Guests can go from savory to sweet using different plates and they can also easily go back and forth. Don't worry too much if you see any wrinkles on the tablecloth. Laying it out will remove some creases. The weight of the dishes will help and the table is basically full, so you're not going to see much of it. 
Now, if you're Punjabi, you will know. The bigger the mug of chai, the longer the evening will continue. It's all about chattering, reminiscing and sharing over hot cups of tea. The napkins are placed on the outside of the fork on the left, between the place settings. So always pick the napkin on your left. Everything in use here has come directly out of the hostessing cabinet I shared last week. I'll leave you the link in case you missed that. Having everything you need in one cabinet directly next to the dining table has been a game changer. I'm pretty excited to plate the food. Last evening, I baked these cupcakes and iced them last night. Everything went well, the evening went on till late, and we had an amazing time. In the last 21 days, we have hosted 17 times, 11 of those times at home. It's getting easier with practice, and these recipes here are my favorite go-tos as they are easy and always appreciated. And by the way, you can also save these recipes for Father's Day, which is coming up soon. And with that, this is Ravina saying happy homemaking.